So I want to talk a little bit about <clears throat> and explain some of the processes that I went through today when I was doing the time lapse thing. Um, this piece, the cake piece, I was doing what's called blocking in. Okay, so blocking in is whenever you lay in like a massive amount of color in an area that you know needs to be some kind of a specific color. I knew that I wanted to push back the negative space and I wanted the cakes to really pop out to the viewer. So I'm using a complementary color scheme here. I chose green here um, for the background. For the foreground, I thought I would do some wet on wet um, blending. We practiced that on the practice orbs that we were um, that we were shading and uh, mixing colors with. Um, if you go back to the time lapse, you'll see that this was all wet and yellow, and I took just a very small amount of green, I dropped it right in through there, and it diffused out, and I smoothed it out. Did the same thing with the blue back here, and I added a touch of violet to get a good blue violet around that, because I want some orange and some yellow orange in this bunt cake here. Um, <clears throat> so this one's gonna be red, like a red velvet cake, and so I want it to pop a lot from this. Um, I'm probably going to use a lot of yellow cake looking elements in this one. That's why I started with just a violet, right? And you can see a difference in the color between the foreground and the background. The background I painted really, really dark. Um, another term there is opaque painting. Um, I talked a little bit about that in the practice demonstration. Opaque is whenever you are painting pretty much like super concentrated, okay? You've only added enough water to your watercolor to get it to move, to spread on the paper. That's why it's so dark, right? Um, and <clears throat> the more water you add to it, the more thin it's going to be and the more the white of the paper is gonna come through. So the lighter the violet or the lavender that we're gonna get here. Did the same thing with like really opaque intense red when I was blocking in the negative space here. And again, when I talk about working back to front, this is another principle um, that, that painters use. They work in the background, then they work to the middle ground, then the foreground. So my next couple of steps are gonna be working on like the plate and the cakes itself, right? I want all this stuff to dry. That way, if I need to paint back over it, like if I messed up, you can see in here, I got some splattery business on here. I can daub that back off and then go ahead and paint over it. In acrylics, you can just straight up paint over it, right? Um, but anyways, I was back here talking about some atmospheric stuff. Like I have this red and then I darken the edges with some violet because I want it to look like it was glowing from the cake. I want it to look like it was actually, you know, like a birthday cake. So I added some yellow in here and mixed that out. Um, in order to do that, I had to pull a little bit of pigment out of the paper, right? So this is all 100% dry. It's ready to go at this point. Um, when I did my wet on wet earlier for the sunset, I put it outside to dry and it buckled a little, um, but for the most part it's dry enough. So what I'm probably going to do is iron it a little bit just to get it going um, in terms of like flatness. And I have my subject picked out and I'll be working on that a little bit later. A couple of other things. I've got my bubblegum project worked out. So another option for the tea bod project. Um, I went in there and I drew as many bubblegum elements as I could. And then in between, I added just like hand-drawn, you know, I didn't use a, a template or a stencil for any of these little guys, um, hand-drawn little bubblegum pieces, you know, uh, any kind of candy you can think of. And then I put a couple out here for context and reference to make it look like there's more space, right? So here we have overlapping. But we also have this whole thing going on that looks kind of flat. But because all of those shapes fit into the larger circular shape, so it's self-referential, um, it has variety, but it also has unity. And that's why it's a good project for younger kids. It is a bit tedious for students to do this much, right? Um, tracing and drawing. But <clears throat> they seem to have a good time when they get a little bit older in modeling each one of the little gumballs. So you remember before I was working with this, um, the two really dimensional lollipops and then the one that's not really dimensional at all. So the first thing I did was I worked out some shadows on those dimensional ones. And I didn't really know what to do with the shadow on the one that's sticking straight up out of the ground or whatever it's in. So I kind of waited on that one. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more context to that. If you choose to do the lollipop project, um, please, work to get them as dimensional as possible, right? Think to yourself, what would Wayne Teabod do? 
look at some of those lollipop examples and stuff that I have in that one lesson plan. And that'll help you see how he does do some foreshortening. Um, and occasionally you'll see these sticks are ridiculously small because of the way that he's foreshortening. Um, so if that's what you want to do, that's fine. We'll go for that one. My first piece that I'm going to start with here um, after that break was the intergalactic planetary piece. Now, a couple of ways I can go about doing this. You saw before when I had the pool project um, or the ball project or the sports project, I used, um, I used crayon to block these out so that it would resist, which was one of our techniques before. So I could go in there and like actually color these with crayon, but I really want to spend more time like making these look very planetary. I'm thinking like Jupiter, Saturn, um, Uranus, any of those planets that really look interestingly vibrant. And I want to get a lot of deep, like dark areas in the negative space to really get that expanse of space thing looking. However, I do want this to like look pretty bright and typically, with watercolor painting, we use white as the, or we, rather, we use the uh, white of the paper as white, okay? So we avoid those areas, right? So I am gonna do a little bit of wax resist on this, and I might pick a few areas out to do that in here as well. Beyond that, I'm gonna go ahead and just paint this whole thing out straight on my mat down here. Okay, so as I'm going through this, pay attention to the time lapse. Um, and then choose your project wisely. Good luck.